What's up, YouTube? B What's up, YouTube? All right, so today I am going to hook up the PCM60X charge controller. Yeah, I know. Pretty exciting times. All right, so I have my old solar wires coming down from the roof down into the basement over there in the corner. I'm gonna use those because they are two gauge wire. They're pretty thick. They're the flexible welding cable with like a million strands in it. I'm gonna use those but i don't have enough from the charge controller to the power rack so a couple of months ago i ordered six gauge wire because i was thinking about using that in between the packs which i never did i'm going to use that for right now until i buy some more of the two gauge wire so i'll have two gauge wire going into the charge controller and then six gauge wire from the charge controller to the power rack this installation is going to be more of a temporary slash permanent install I'm not exactly sure yet because I I seem to change my mind all the time so I'm gonna start making the wires from the charge controller to the battery bank and I'm gonna make them kind of about eight feet long that's because I want to be able to pull the power rack away from the wall if I need to and since it's a temporary install whatever right okay so let's get started this stuff is the six gauge welding wire as well I can leave a link down below if you like. All right, so I'm gonna put on some of these terminals for the connection to the power wall. So I'll do that first. There is quite a bit of copper strands in there, so this should work out just fine for a couple of weeks or so. Boom! 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 All right, and the other side of this one is just going straight to the charge controller. All right, so I'm just now thinking that I don't think I need two of the lugs on the positive end because it's gonna go from the charge controller straight to the power rack. So huh, I guess I don't need both of these on there. So I'm gonna snip one off. See, this is what happens when you make shit up as you go. All right, so we can head over to the corner where it's gonna be installed. All right, so this is underneath my basement stairs. I have right here the two gauge wire coming from the solar panels on the roof. They just come out through the wall basically and they're just kind of dangling dangerously. So I'm gonna set the power wall probably like right here-ish. And I'm thinking about just putting the charge controller right up here above it so I can read it. And th these right here are a little long, but I'm gonna leave them long for right now. And then off the charge controller, I'll have the wires coming out of that into the power rack to charge it. All right, so the server rack is 49 inches tall and 24 inches wide. So I wanna have enough, there's this little shelf sitting right over here. I wanna have enough room to at least walk by that and or if I need to pull the rack out away from the wall to get to the backside. I can. And that's the reason for the eight foot leads coming off the charge controller into the power rack. So I think I'm going to try to mount it, I don't know, probably a good 26 inches off that wall. And 49 is right here. I definitely want to go a little bit higher than that if I can. Probably going to do it right at 50. That way the, you won't see too many of the wires while it's up against the wall. So what I say, 26. Mm, maybe I'm gonna go a little bit higher. Well, let me grab the charge controller and see what it looks like up against the wall. I could probably just wing it right there. Kind of like that spot. Hammer drill time. I 
doesn't want to go through that spot. Okay, well, this one right here, I don't know, I think there's like a diamond in the wall or something because I cannot get it to go any deeper. So I'm only gonna use three screws. And since it's on the top, I won't see it because I'm so short. So we're good. As you can see here, we have the remote temperature sensor, which I do not have. Battery voltage sense line, solar positive, solar negative, battery negative, and battery positive. First thing I'm gonna do is hook up the battery voltage sense lines. Next, we'll do the battery negative. And then battery positive. And the manual says to make sure you hook up the battery first. So this is the car audio fuse. I'm just gonna put this right before the charge controller from the solar. It's a 100 amp. I think it'll be just fine for right now. So this is the positive lead from the solar. And then I have this shorter piece, which will go from the bottom of the fuse into the charge controller. That's probably good so I can get into the backside. Now the reason why I wanted the ones that go to the battery a little bit longer, that's so I can push it away from the wall to still get into the back of it right now. There is a hole and I'm just gonna drop the cables down there. But before I do that, I just cut up some little pieces of uh, heat shrink to cover up the edges. Figured I might as well do that real quick too. And down the hatch we go. First thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna put the voltage sensing lines on this side of the fuse because it is closest to the battery. And then I'll hook up the solar charge controller to this side. So at least has to go through the fuses. Disconnect the packs real quick so I don't accidentally touch anything. Alright, I guess I could hook the pack back up. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it back into the UPS. Let's go check the charge controller now. All right, let me go ahead and turn it on real quick. We do have a blinking error code of 20, and that just means the solar is not hooked up or low solar voltage. So that's great, because we don't even have it hooked up yet. But the pack is sitting at 52.6. Perfect, all right. Let's uh, hook up the rest of the solar connections. So we just have to hook up the negative solar and then we're gonna hook up the fuse. And sorry for the lighting, my light sucks down here. Okay, now, before I go any further, I probably should have done this before, but I didn't, I kind of forgot. I need to run all the wires through it. Let me unhook the power rack connections so I don't short anything out.
102 watts going in. Well, oh, must have hit a cloud. I guess I don't really need that anymore. All right, well, here is the MPP tracker software. I'm only putting in 277 watts roughly right now. You can see that right here. It is around 615 at night, so it's gonna be going down from here on out for the rest of the day of course but it's working it's charging the battery and let's see some of the input settings the from the solar panels is around 58 that kind of changes with the Sun battery voltage is 53.17 and putting in 4.81 amps Oops. so that, of course all of these are going to be changing really if if a cloud goes by or if there's any sort of shade but yeah it is working holy crap and here is the absorption voltage again, it's at 14, and the float voltage is at 14. That will give me a total of 56 volts, and I'm gonna do it at 56 first to get them all kind of charged up, and then I'll probably do a top balance one more time before I start doing some more tests. Well, the packs are pretty equal right now, but we have 381, 379, 379, 379, 381, 379, 77, 79 slash 80, 81, 81, 81, 81, 81, 81 79, 78, and 79. So yeah, it's working. I'll let them charge up to about 4, 4.1, and then I'll probably do a top balance, and then go from there. Charge controller says the battery voltage is at like 53.2 so I'm just gonna check it with this and see how close they are. Right here it says 53 and charge controller says 53.2 so whatever. Looks good enough to me. All right there you go. Charge controller hooked up. Check. All right, so that's how you hook up a charge controller, kind of. Uh, in the manual, of course, it says don't mount it to anything burnable, basically, because I was going to throw up just a piece of wood over there so everything could be mounted onto that. And I was like, well, I don't know how hot it gets, so I'll just mount it to the concrete wall and call it a day. I don't know how permanent it's going to be right there, but this is going to be my testing area to make sure everything else is going as it should. And once I figure out the permanent position and of course we'll make a update video so the time right now is 6 30 so I don't have much sunlight on the panels right now I guess what I need to do now is get some more like circuit breakers or disconnects what else do I need to get some more two gauge wire to go from the charge controller to the batteries I want as big as I can get and two gauges is a good size but yeah I don't I mean, I don't really know what else to say except I finally have it hooked up. I could technically use it if I really wanted to, but I'll let it charge up to like four, 4.1 or so, and then I'm gonna do a top balance, let them sit for a couple of days, and then re-hook it back up. And one of the first tests, I guess, that I do after they're balanced, I'm gonna do the APC battery calibration test. So hopefully that will just shut off when it's supposed to. Technically, I don't really want it to shut off, but if it does shut off, I want it to shut off when it's supposed to. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and I will see you on the next one. Um, my, I think it's six. Sorry, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna start off making the the wires and i got this off of youtube the and i made it too long of course i really need to stop doing that don't i so let's do that uh, 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 uh um i of course will create um the